By January 1999, the Lara Croft video game franchise is a gold mine. Lara Croft launched IDOS literally in 96, and we, we rode on the back of Lara to where in 1999, we were literally the fastest growing stock on the NASDAQ, the fastest growing company, mid-sized company in the world. Our stock went from something like nine to 109 in less than a year. Lara is a fantasy. She is what everybody wants to be, boy or girl. She represents, in a way, uh, an Indiana Jones type character where you can go out and find something, hunt it down, take care of the baddies, and then prevail over evil. IDOS stock is soaring thanks to strong Christmas 1998 sales of Tomb Raider 3. Soon after, however, sales of the new game begin to slow. We created very large environments, um, and we didn't guide them through enough. I think in hindsight, when we look back now, we, we gave them a key and we said, ha, go and find where you use this key. We didn't tell them, and they'd have that key for hours, and they couldn't find where to use it, and it be almost became frustrating. So when Tomb Raider 3 came out, how are you going to be able to continue those rates of sale with other games? Uh, so we purchased companies, or we put other games in development, um, but nothing had the same impact as Tomb Raider. So you go back to core and say, well, we need Tomb Raider 4 now. Tomb Raider The Last Revelation is released for Christmas 1999, but Laura's fans are more than frustrated by the fourth game. I don't think anybody was happy with the game at the end of the day. We felt our results could have been better. We were asking way too much of the team, expecting them to be able to put these types of games out year on year on year. We said, look, we've been everywhere. We've been into London, we've been into sewers. Let's get back to Tomb Raider. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to where we started. But for Lara, going back to her roots will be her last adventure. She finally meets her match in an Egyptian tomb. So we came up with the idea of, of killing her off. Quickly, girl, before it collapses around you. <clears throat> we also thought we'd get a holiday if she wasn't around. We always thought that the consumers never believed for one moment we are going to kill Lara off. But it gave us a clean slate. Although sales for the shocking sequel don't reach earlier records, Laura's fans do show up to bid her a final farewell. Everybody can say, well, it wasn't that great a game, but then you look at Tomb Raider 4 and it still sold multiple millions of units. So it couldn't have been that bad. You know, the end of The Last Revelation was an important sort of milestone for us because that meant that the next generation games were being developed and being worked on. For years, the debate has raged over which actress will play Lara in the long-anticipated feature film. And the winner is... What was the most gratifying part for me is seeing Angelina Jolie portray those exact same qualities. You know, Angelina herself is like that, from what I've heard, but she certainly portrayed Laura Croft in that way. That She was a, kind of a take-no-prisoners gal, and that's Laura Croft. In a pleasant, so the ponytailed heroine lives on, at least in some sort of alternate universe, and in the hearts of fans worldwide. What does Laura represent? I think somebody that, that really knows her mind. She really has a zest for life. Laura Croft was not only a, a video icon, she was the digital diva and still is for all of computer technology. Even today, we've seen lots of the games come and go. They've always going to be the next sort of Lara Croft replacement, and still today, she, she reigns supreme. She is the industry icon for the next generation of hardware. Just now. Lara Croft is kind of a role model for women out there who find themselves sometimes in, in a male world where they can say, you know what? I, I'm my own woman. I don't need men. I make my own rules. Miss Croft. Give a girl a break.